Good morning and welcome to Rosebread Homestead. Today we're going to do a follow-up, actually a redo of uh, Italian meat sauce in both the Presto Digital and the Max, both electric canners. Last time we did this, it was a little iffy because the sauce was so very thick. I have worked on this recipe, I have thinned it down, so we're going to redo it so that um, I can be assured that this is a safe recipe that can be used in both canners. I am still using the Bernardin recipe, but I have made some adjustments to that recipe. Now I'm going to put two things below in the video description. One will be the link to the Bernardin uh, recipe and then the second will be a list of the ingredients as they appear in the Bernardin reci recipe and then my adjustments will be in parentheses on the side. This is a tested recipe so everything else we will be following. Um, so let's get started in just a moment. adjustment that I'm going to make is to the amount of meat. Now the Bernardin recipe calls for five pounds of meat. I'm using three and a half pounds of meat because um, that so much meat add to, added to the viscosity of the sauce, which was one reason the heat didn't penetrate to the center. So I'm going to just brown this meat, small batches at a time, and um, then I'm going to put it into the big saucepan that's over on the stove. Then after I get the meat in there, I'm going to add to that meat the, um, the one cup of green peppers and the two cups of onions and I'm going to continue cooking that until the veggies are just um, just slightly done. Uh, they will certainly cook all the way through during the process but uh, I'll come back at that point and then I'll tell you what the rest of the ingredients are. The meat is browned. It is not all the way cooked. It's browned and the veggies, the onions are just barely starting to get a little bit transparent. So that's about exactly what we want. Now we're going to add the rest of the ingredients. Now um, one of the things that the next um, adjustment that I have made is in the amount of tomatoes. Now according to the recipe we should put in three cans of these tomatoes. Um, each one is three cups. It calls for nine cups. So instead of putting in three cans, I'm going to be putting in four cans because I want to make it a little thinner sauce and this will help thin it down. So here's four cans of these tomatoes. So they're just stacked right up on top there. Now I'm going to put in the tomato paste. Now tomato paste, as we all know, is very thick. And so it calls for two and two thirds cups. Instead, I'm going to use two 12 ounce cans. I'm going to be using the um, amount of spices called for in the recipe. And because I'm adding extra tomatoes, but not the same tomato paste, we may need to adjust the spices to taste. And that is just fine. We can add all the dry spices we want. So the important thing on a tested recipe is what the ingredients are, and all of them should be ingredients that are safe to pressure can, and then um, the viscosity. So adjusting the spices won't hurt a thing if we need to do that. Okay. Now, the last of the ingredients, according to this tested recipe, are the salt and pepper and spices. And this is the exact number called for in the recipe. So it's four tablespoons of salt. I better get the recipe to make sure. Okay, so it's four tablespoons of salt, one tablespoon each of oregano, basil, and thyme, half a teaspoon each of pepper, ginger, and ground allspice. Then, here goes two tablespoons of vinegar, 
two tablespoons of brown sugar, and last but not least, a fourth of a cup of chopped parsley. And this is the Italian flat leaf parsley. Now I'm just going to give this a good stir. And then we're going to look at the viscosity. Because what we have to do now is to cook this to the appropriate thickness. Now this is where we need to make sure that this is not way, 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 way too thick. And right now it's way, way, way too thick. I'm going to add a couple of cans of water. So this is another addition that I'm going to do. So that was 24 ounces of water. That was two cans of water. And I'm going to add two more. Now, both recipes say to, when you get to this point, both by, I also looked at the USDA recipe as well as the Bernardin. I'm following the Bernardin because I like the flavors in here better. Um, and it did not call for this much extra water, but I'm putting this much extra water in because my tomatoes were probably thicker than some other ones. There's a, a tomato vine. Um, I'm going to give it a quick little taste to see if we need to adjust the spices. Not at this point. We don't. We might after we get it cooked. The next thing to do is we are going to put this on the stove and we're going to heat it up. It needs to go in hot and if necessary we can cook it down to the proper, and here's what the USDA says, to proper serving consistency. So we're going to do a little experiment when I get back in just a moment. I'm going to get this started on the stove to warm up to boiling and then um, come back and we'll do our experiment. So what is serving consistency and how will we know when our new batch is about at serving consistency? Well I figured one of the best ways to do that was to start with a store-bought brand. So um, here is some store-bought spaghetti sauce and that's its viscosity right there. Here is our meat sauce that we canned that was a little bit questionable, that the heat didn't get all the way in. So let's take a look at it. Now we can see that it is much thicker and it stays taller so it does not uh, spread out the way this one does. It's full of, it's full of the little grain, ground beads of meat and so this is the part that did not get the heat transfer. Now I'm going to go take a sample of what we have in our pot right now. So even though it has chunks in it, the juice is still runny. It's a little, it falls down a little bit more than this one does. So I think probably when this heats to a boiling we're just about ready. Now this runs a little bit so I will let um, some of that evaporate off. But what we're wanting is more this than this. So when we come back for the final trial, we'll put a clean scoop of this one over here and we'll compare it. So we'll be back when we're ready to put these in the jars. So we have several complications here. I've got canter cords running across. The sun is encroaching on our um, bar here, so and it makes the colors all wonky. So here is our testing plate. Um, this was the store-bought, this was last June's canning, this was this morning before we um, let it evaporate some of the, we cooked it down just a little bit, but not a whole lot, and so let's do our test. So here we go. All right, it is runnier and less viscous than this. 
Notice that the pieces of meat are just a little bit larger, the chunks of tomato are a little bit larger. So one of the things with this one was that we, um, I crumbled the meat in such tiny crumbles that it made it very viscous. So the meat is less viscous here. This is more serving like, this would be yummy too, and it is yummy, but we're just looking for a thinner sauce. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get started. Now, um, I know that in some of these Presto Digitals, there's a way to bypass the jar warming, but I've tried it and it evidently does not work on mine. And so I already have the jars warming in here and I'm, we're doing five quarts in, in this one. And in the max that I'm gonna move over in just a minute, we will be doing four pints. So I'm gonna get our test plate out of the way. So the canner is now in place and I'm gonna fill jars. So we'll fill the four pints for the um, max first. And I'm stirring this around every time to equally distribute all the solids. And we'll get rid of the air. Wipe the rims. Finger tight and into the canner. So when I get this canner filled, we'll be back. Everything is locked in place. All right, I'm not going to push pressure cook. That's the error that I did last time. So I'm going to push canning. And this says one hour and 15 minutes. I'm just going to uh, take those minutes down to zero because we need 60 minutes is the recommended time, both Bernardin and the USDA. Checking pressure, it is on max. Making sure that venting is no venting. We need for it to do um, it a regular cool down without doing any venting whatsoever. So all we have to do now is press start because I already have my elevation plugged into here so we can go. It's telling me that the inside temperature of the canner is now at 97 degrees. We'll keep an eye on this all during processing. We want it to get up to at least 240 and pro hopefully it will get up to 246, 247 is where it usually hangs out when it's doing its thing. Now over here on this one, um, we are now to the fill jar spot. So I'm going to open it up, get those jars out, and I'll do the same to them. And I'll bring you back when I'm about to put my uh, data logger in one of the jars. So I have the data logger right here. It is running. I'm going to put a little bit of the sauce in the bottom of the jar just to kind of hold it in place. Then I'm gonna put it right smack in the middle. Well, maybe that wasn't such a good idea. Okay, that one is ready, and the last one coming up. We checked for air bubbles, we wiped the rim, we put it here. I almost forgot to mark the jar where my data uh, logger was, but I, I did. I want you to see how much we have left. Hardly anything. So we turned out really, really close. So it's all good. Oof, that feels good to get all that out of the way. Okay, now we can just focus on the canning part. So I'm going to get the lid and put the lid on here, lock it in place, and we are going to advance this. We filled the jars, and now it's going to be heating up. It's going to be starting the canning process. So we are going to want to move this over. I have it on vent right now, so we're moving o over to can, so no steam is going to be escaping. And I've already set this for 60 minutes, and um, 
So we'll just let it do its thing. We're going to be checking on this one to see. It is up to 201 degrees and um, so pretty soon this one will um, be up into the kill zone. So we'll come back after a little bit and check to see where we are with everything. Notice that this canner is in a different place. Um, having both canners plugged into that one power strip, which was a different power strip than we used before, uh, tripped the circuit on the power strip. So we had to move this canner over here. And so this is the max. It finished a, a while ago. It's been cooling down for an hour and 22 minutes. And so now it is safe to go ahead and open that. And the whole time <clears throat> for the countdown, for the 60 minute countdown, um, I was monitoring the temperature and I don't monitor it constantly. Um, I just walk through the kitchen three or four times during the processing and it was from 44 to 46. And so I am totally confident that these are completely okay and they were in the kill zone long enough. So we'll let these start to cool and then we will check on our Presto. Okay, let's check on the Presto. The Presto now has only 10 minutes left for its cooling down period and then when it gets down to zero, we can put it on vent and vent the canner and then we can remove. It's been cooling down for over an hour so far. So we'll let it finish up and then we'll come out and pull this out and we will retrieve our logger and see what the results are. We're testing out our new sound equipment today. You may have noticed my little lapel mic right here. We're picking up some kind of a buzz and so I have the fuzzy thing on hoping that that will take care of it. I have analyzed the data and um, th this is not good news. I'm so sorry. Um, it didn't even get into the kill zone. This is the 75 minutes of processing time. It started right here at um, 84 degrees centigrade. Now why it turned on, why the processing started, uh, the countdown from 75 minutes, 74 minutes, 73 minutes on the canner screen. I don't know why it started so soon. I've noticed that it does that sometimes and by the end of 75 minutes it was only at 114 which is the same as 237 Fahrenheit. 240 Fahrenheit is where it needed to be. So I, I'm, I'm really sad. Um, this did not make it even into the kill zone. So the bottom line on this is that I can certainly recommend the Max for the meat sauce, for the spaghetti meat sauce. I cannot recommend the Presto. This is twice now that it has not even gotten into the kill zone. And I'm very sad about that. Um, I think it works for a lot of other things. Um, you'll just have to make your own decisions on that. But I, I am going to stay completely away from canning anything, from pressure canning, anything that is the least bit thick. Um, viscous, uh, something like beef stew where you have larger chunks and a lot of liquid, it will be fine. Um, but somehow this meat sauce just does not do well in the Presto. So that is my recommendation for whatever it's worth, knowing that everyone will need to make their own decisions. So I'm done testing meat sauce. I won't do another batch. We have enough to choke a horse. So, but we're grateful for um, being able to have this on our pantry shelf. It will last us probably a couple of years, actually. So thank you uh, for being with us for this redo. And we have half good news and half not so good news. So it's not altogether bad. So thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time.